unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. So unto you, O Lord, do we lift up our souls. Mel and you, Luann and Connie, unto you, O Lord, do we lift up our souls. O Miss Donna, just trust in thee, then let not be ashamed. We will not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over us. So, Miss Connie, unto you, O Lord, do we lift up our souls unto you, O Lord. Do we lift up our souls Oh, our God, we trust in you. Let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over America. Oh, hallelujah. Over all of us, over the redeemed and the saved. Miss Kathy, glory to God. Well, welcome, y'all. Guess what? It's a brand new month, August 1. Isn't that something? August 1. And we even have a brother named August. We'll celebrate him right along with the month. <clears throat> and it's a beautiful day. He has given us a beautiful day. The flowers are still blooming. The birds are still singing. The wind is still blowing. Let's concentrate and start off our day looking at all the beautiful, beautiful things God has given us. So on this August 1st, we will begin reading 2 Chronicles chapter 30 and a good share of 31. 2 Chronicles, Devrim Ha Yamin. 2 Chronicles and Hezekiah this wonderful reign of this good, good ruler. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. Oh, he's going to establish once again the set order of the set feasts that God did. Man didn't arrange anything. He set these feasts for the king and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover in the second month for they could not keep it at the regular time because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves nor had the people gathered together at Yerushalayim. So you see, it's going to take something to get all of this in motion again. These priests are dragging their feet, trying to decide if they're going to do it, right? And the people haven't gotten serious and started out for the trip to Yerushalayim. Good morning, Miss Yolinda. We are glad to hear your healing news. Hallelujah. And Miss Elizabeth, praise God. So here he is, the king. Praise God, he's in authority so he can command it, okay? And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly, so they resolved. There, there's, there's the important verb. They resolved. They made up their mind not to change it. To make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since 
They had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. I mean, O King Hezekiah is going to have every detail just the way the Lord said. And then the runners, ah, these are the mail trucks. And then the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the king and his leaders and spoke according to the command of the king. Children of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and then he will return to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. And do not be like your fathers and your brethren who trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers so that he gave them up to desolation. You know, God can just give you up. Ooh, that's awful. I don't even want to say those words. So that he gave them up to desolation, as you see. Now, do not be stiff-necked. Stiff-necked. <laughs> stiff-necked, as your fathers were. But yield yourselves to the Lord and enter the sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who led, led them captive, so that they may come back to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. And oh, the people rejoiced and said right away, well, let's go. Hmm, let's read on. So the runners passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun, but they laughed at them and mocked them. What a shock for those runners. Don't you imagine after all that started happening, their feet were pretty heavy to run to the next place. But they did, because the king commanded it. Nevertheless, some, you always have to start with a remnant, okay? Even if it's one, and then two agree, all right? Nevertheless, some from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. And do you suppose they were mocked by their relatives and their neighbors? You aren't going to go to Jerusalem and do all this, are you? What Are you crazy? Listen, we have work to do around here. I mean, can't you just hear it? Also, the hand of God. There, there, now we're down to the bottom line. Also, the hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart, to obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of the Lord. All right, so we've struck a match now, haven't we? And we've got some backing up. They're coming. Now, many people of very great assembly gathered at Jerusalem to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month. You see a little here, a little there. You know, you where you are and me where I am. And when we get it all together, it's a big group. Hallelujah. They arose and they took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and they took away all the incense altars and they cast them into the brook Kidron. I, I feel bad that they ruined the brook, but that's what they did. And then they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the 14th day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves. Aha. Uh -huh. You see, as you start out 
Conviction's going to come on somebody else. Praise God. And sanctified themselves, which they should have been the first ones, but okay, here they go. They're going to finally do it. And brought the offerings to the house of the Lord. They stood in their place according to their custom, according to the law of Moses, Moshe, the man of God. The priest sprinkled the blood received from the hand of the Levites, for there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. But they came. They came. They had not sanctified themselves. Therefore, the Levites had charge of the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not cleansed themselves. <clears throat> and don't you know they knew that? But they came. So let's see what the Lord does. They had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek God. Oh, glory to God. You might have a situation. You are barely preparing your heart to face it, handle it, whatever. But start out, even a tiny step, start out. God will work with you. So here we go. That God, the Lord, will provide atonement for everyone who prepares his heart to seek God. The Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord listened. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Oh, praise you, Jesus. So the children of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests Praise the Lord day by day, singing to the Lord. Well, they got inspired, and so they were singing to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. And Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord, and they ate throughout the feast seven days offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. Don't you imagine those people who weren't sanctified, but they went ahead and ate anyway? Think how they felt when they, they, they realized, and Hezekiah realized, God had listened and it was okay. He forgave them. Woo! Then the whole assembly agreed. There we go. It's agreement we need to keep the feast another seven days and they kept it another seven days with gladness for hezekiah king of judah gave that's how hezekiah got everything going that's what we need to do to get something going give give do something well shabbat shalom we book or tov on this biblical date of 11 of Good morning, Scott and Mel and Anne Marie. Praise God. <clears throat> For Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the leaders gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep. You see, he inspired the leaders then, they joined in, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. All right, we've got this thing rolling now. The whole assembly of Judah rejoiced. Also the priests and the Levites, all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners who came from the land of Israel, and those who dwelt in Judah. 
So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Think of that. What a long time. Totally undone and neglected. And then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard. And their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, to heaven. Isn't all of this good news? And you see, we're preparing again. Our brother Scott could tell us a bunch of stuff about the preparation for the next temple. All right, we move right along to chapter 31. Chapter 31. Now, when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke the sacred pillars in pieces, cut down the wooden images, and threw down the high places and the altars from all Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh until they had utterly destroyed them all. There was an anointing on them to go do that. Brave, courageous, went home and and entered in to say, man, we're going to clean this up when we're going to face those that are going to resist us. Woo! We need some more of that, don't we? Good morning, Miss Wanda. And Kram Yoman, Daniel. Daniel. And then all the children of Israel returned to their own cities, every man to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and the Levites according to their divisions, each man according to his service, the priests and Levites for burnt offerings and peace offerings to serve, to give thanks, and to praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord. The king also appointed a portion of his possessions for the burnt offerings. That king is just giving and giving and giving, isn't he? For the morning and evening burnt offerings, the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and the new moons and the set feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Moreover, he commanded the people who dwelt in Jerusalem to contribute support for the priests and the Levites, that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. See there again, giving. Giving first opens up all that within your heart and your soul. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil and honey, and of all the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly the tithe. There we go. Now we're, now we're down to what we ought to be doing. Brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God, they laid in heaps. So much, it just got built up in heaps. In the third month, they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. Just think how much would have been brought in from the third month to the seventh month. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. And then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left.
for the Lord has blessed his people. Oh, there you go. It gets right back down to, are you walking with the Lord so he can bless you? And what is left is this great abundance. And when just a little tiny bit left, here are these heaps. Now Hezekiah commanded them to prepare rooms in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. And then they faithfully brought in the offerings, the tithes, and the dedicated things. Konaniah the Levite had charge of them, and Shimei, his brother, was the next. Yehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Ashehel, Yeramot, Yosabad, El Eliel, Ishmachiah, Ishmachiah, Mahat, and Benaniah were overseers under the hand of Konaniah and Shemei, his brother, at the commandment of Hezekiah the king and Azariah, the ruler of the house of God. And I hope you didn't have to cringe at how I pronounced everybody's name, Scott. Cory, the son of Imnah the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was over the free will offerings to God to distribute the offerings of the Lord and the most holy things. And under him were Eden, Minaimin, Yeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah, his faithful assistants in the cities of the priests, to distribute allotments to their brethren by divisions, to the great as well as the small. And besides those males from three years old, now imagine this, three years old and up, who were written in the genealogy, they distributed to everyone who entered the house of the Lord his daily portion for the work of his service by his division. And to the priests who were written in the genealogy according to their father's house, and to the Levites from 20 years old and up according to their work by their divisions and to all who were written in the genealogy. Mm, we're seeing once again the importance of having the genealogy. Their little ones and their wives, their sons and daughters, the whole company of them, for in their faithfulness, they sanctified themselves in holiness. Also, for the sons of Aaron, the priests, who were in the fields of the common lands of their cities, in every single city, every single city, there were men who were designated by name to distribute portions to all the males among the priests, and to all who were listed by genealogies among the Levites. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God, and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for us to give our whole heart. So he prospered. Do we want to prosper? Then let's follow and serve him with all our hearts, our time, our money, our every waking moment, in the middle of the night, all our heart. Oh, was that not rich and wonderful? I enjoyed reading that. Kram Yaman, Daniel is watching. Wonderful. All right, we move right along to the great and glorious New Covenant, the New Testament, to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. We then, who are strong, ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor 
for his good, leading to edification. That's what we want happening. Everybody being edified, edification. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written in Psalm 69, 9, the reproaches, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me, the Lord. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. This is giving us hope today. Are you feeling hope? I pray you are. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. And as it is written in 2 Samuel twenty two fifty, For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he says in Deuteronomy 32, 43, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And we are, we are rejoicing with God's people in Jerusalem, in Israel, all over the world. And again, more places in Psalm 117, 1. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says in chapter 11, verse 10. There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall arise to reign over the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. And we are, aren't we, today? He is our hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about Till Illyricum, and I don't think I said that one right. It'd be nice if you spelled that one out for me, Scott. <clears throat> I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That's what we're after. The whole gospel of Jesus Christ. Good morning, Miss Maria. 
And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. But as it is written in Isaiah 52, 15, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. For this reason, I also have been much hindered from coming to you. Oh, Satan fighting him all the way, right? But he kept on coming, kept on coming. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful word that is. All right, we move right along to Psalm 25. Psalm 25, and please check out Kathy's graphics. Oh, they are just superb. They are superb today for every one of these areas of the scriptures. <clears throat> A Psalm of David. Unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me and you. And that's where that opening little tune I sang comes from. Psalm 25, 1. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. So you and I better make sure that we are not intimidated by some brash person in the world and feel any shame towards Christ. Show me your paths, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth. Oh, thank God they're under the blood, right? Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to your mercy. Remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. To such as keep his covenant and his testimonies, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Okay, I will study that, Scott. Thank you. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Let's say that question again. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Praise God, do you feel like you're caught in a net of some kind? Sometimes it's just, it's just like we're in a hold that we need to break out of. We blunder through a day hardly getting anything done, just looking at all the stuff, getting weighed down heavy. Oh, let's break out of all of that in the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. All right, we wrap up today with Proverbs chapter 20. Verses 13 through 15. Proverbs 20, 13 through 15. <laughs> Here we go to add to what I just said. Do not love sleep, lest you come to poverty. 
open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. Don't be lazy, work, and you will enjoy prosperity. It is good for nothing, cries the buyer. <laughs> but when he has gone his way, then he boasts. Think that one over. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. The lips of knowledge. Oh, that's what I want. Even in these gray-haired days. Get it while you're young. And your mind and your brain are just working really well. I read it. I love it. And then I say, no, where was that? What was that? <laughs> but I'm still at it. <laughs> and I know you are. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Scott, for coming once again to this little group that's trudging on and giving us such wise, wise knowledge, wisdom. We're gathering it up best we can. I hope all of you are writing down what Scott has to say so you'll have it. Praise God. Let's close in prayer. Father God, oh, we bless you for this brand new day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you, Lord, for where you have put us to live. We have more than enough blessings from you. We have refrigerators keeping food fresh, nice. We have so many things. But what's important is we have you. We used to know about you, but now we know you. And if you don't know him, ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your heart, into your life. Give him all, just give it all to him. And watch what a blessed decision that is in your life. Best decision you'll ever make. So Father God, back to prayer to you. We bless you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for going to the cross for us and then showing the whole world that you are alive again. Resurrection. No other religion can claim resurrection from the dead. We have that hope and that promise in us, Lord, that following you, the hope and the promise you've given us is eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if that wasn't enough, and it is, oh, that you are preparing for us. And then we get to come back with you. I mean, we could go on and on. Lord, the wonderful things ahead. So, Lord, we have hope. We have confidence for the day. We feel security in you. No matter what's going on around us, security in you. And other people, Lord, we know will sense that. They will draw from us. They will be saying within themselves, what is it this person has? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We hold up Yerushalayim, Israel. We hold up Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the Knesset. We hold up the wonderful IDF. The whole country is an IDF. Everyone required to go into the service for two years. And they have their supplies ready in their homes. They are ready. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What an example for us to not be lazy, but to get ready. To get ready for whatever. And mostly get ready 
for you, for you, soon coming king, bursting in the skies and the clouds. Oh, what a day that will be, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have told us all about it so we know what to expect. Thank you for preserving your word, Lord, for we Gentiles, along with your people, Israel. We are so appreciative today. We have it in our hand. And Lord, we're asking Holy Ghost to quicken and put it in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits forever, forever. Lord, we hold up Israel and we ask, please, Lord, let them enjoy your peace today. You ask us, Lord Jesus, to pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. So we do. And it never gets old. It's fresh every day. It's fresh every time you bring it to our minds. We want it to be an unbroken cord of prayer. An unbroken cord of prayer. People around the clock praying and saying this type of prayer for your city, Jerusalem, your precious place of Israel. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for giving us the privilege to pray. Thank you for all those who love her and are embracing her, who give to her, who go and visit the land who study. Father God, I hold up America to you. And I have two brothers this morning to hold up Kenya. Praise God. Hold her up, my brothers. We hold up, I hold up America. You hold up America. And we thank you, Lord, for this brave, brave man who gave up great wealth and I mean, a life, he says it himself, a beautiful life, free of all the attacks. And he gave it up to be our president at this time. A man called, I believe, and anointed by God for this time, this position, this season. So, Lord, we hold him up. We hold him up. We surround him with prayer. We ask for angels to surround him, to be with him. We ask for the best people to walk alongside of him, protecting, giving their lives every day to do this. Thank you, Lord. Let him see, let him hear, let him do from you today. Let him see it, Lord, your plan. Let him, let him do it. He's bold and brave. Give him strength today, Lord, not to give in to those trying to cause him to fall off the track. No, Lord, please keep him firm on your path. Keep the whole administration firm on your path. And Lord, we pray to you to deal with all those who are opposing you and your righteousness. Lord, we pray for them. We pray that they might be saved. They are so lost and filled with hate. I mean, it's crazy what they are saying that they want. If they get what they want, they won't like it. So, Lord, we're asking, please, send Holy Ghost to work with them, to draw on their hearts, to bring more and more into your kingdom and pull them. The Word of God says some we have to compel to come out of Satan's ways and come in to the glorious kingdom of God. Precious Lord, we hold up ourselves. We'd ask, Lord, you'd show us even more how to yield, how to yield our whole hearts, how to eliminate the sin that trips us up, <clears throat> how to worship you, with a whole heart that would please you, how to drink in your word, drinking it in, while we have this freedom to do so. While we have this freedom, y'all, 
Let's not waste a minute. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, your precious hand upon us in our lives. Please, Lord, hear our prayers. Please, Lord, heal those who need healing. Please, Lord, we thank you that healing is happening under Yolinda's roof. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Marcus. We hold him up to you, Lord. We ask that the total healing be finished. We ask, Lord, that you heal and deliver all who need deliverance today. Particularly, Lord, I lift up and pray for the little children. The children who have been kidnapped right off a playground or a street. Or... Dear God, please be with them. The fright, the terrible things that they were snatched for. Oh God, I'd ask you would deal with all of those that would dare do such a lowly thing. I'd ask, Lord, that you would continue to reveal publicly all of the people, all of the shame, some of them high people, we would say, who have participated and pleasured their sinful, wicked flesh, filled their pockets with money on other people's misery that they, they did. They did themselves. Lord, please expose them. And then, Lord, those in charge, I'd ask you would bless and anoint Attorney General A.G. Barr and all those working with him to not just gather up the information, but to lower the boom. Precious God, unless those people have to face their sin, just like you and me, their salvation is not drawing near. The best thing that could happen to them is be openly exposed and caught that they might repent of their sins and get saved. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We'd ask that you would work with these imperfect prayers of ours. But we pray, Lord, from our hearts. From our hearts. All of God's people continued with their prayers. Their prayers. Crying, amen. Crying out to you for the things that they are giving to you. And then don't oh, take it back, y'all. Don't take it back. Leave it with him that he might work it out. I'd ask, Lord, you'd put a special blessing on our dear brother Scott <clears throat> and all that he is endeavoring to do for the kingdom of God. Father God, bless it, anoint it. Show him where things are hidden in the deep searches and resources of your word, your Torah. And we will give you the praise and the glory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Have a great day, y'all. I love you so much. Bye-bye.